Welcome to this year's Engineering and Science Fair. My name is Ketty Davis, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to this amazing event. It's an incredible year that we've had, and we're very thankful to be able to bring this event to you in a different form, but still with amazing scientists and engineers in front of you. I want to personally thank both Jerrianna Billington and also Anthony Tosto for uh, keeping this event alive, along with parents, students, and teachers uh, who make sure this type of enriching activity is available for our students. As is the theme, this is a year of perseverance. Curiosity is always a part of engineering and science, but this indeed has been a year of perseverance. And when I looked through the projects of students, I found activities that both pre presented curiosity as well as gave us an opportunity to think about how we're persevering through a time that we've never experienced before. I was intrigued by projects about where in my household might the most germs exist, and I was incredibly interested in what areas of my house might be blocking my Wi-Fi router. These are present events that create solutions for now and for our future, and the very best part is every project brought more questions, and that's what we want. We want our students to continue to question, continue to think about how to persevere in any situation that they're placed in, and to find solutions to make our environment and our surroundings a better place. So thank you for teachers, for students, for parents, for all of you that are involved in this. I believe that you will find many amazing projects in front of you. Thank you. Greetings, young scientists, engineers, parents, coaches, teachers, and other Central family. I am Jerrianna Billington, your District Assistant Director for STEM and Gifted and Talented Education. We are pleased to be able to share this ceremony with you and recognize the 2020-2021 Science and Engineering Award winners. This year has been like none other, and you decided to rise above the challenges. We are so proud of you. We congratulate you for planning and carrying out an investigation, for asking questions and for answering questions, and for taking the risks in order to solve problems. Coaches, we thank you for your dedication to students. You are essential to the program. The support you provide your students during the science and engineering process is valuable. Parents, we thank you for cheering your students at home and for supporting them every step of the way. Finally, the Science and Engineering Fair would not take place without the support of our district and site administration, teachers, board of trustees, and local sponsors. A heartfelt thank you to the Central Unified Foundation, the Fresno Lions Club, Target, and Ace Trophy for the donations and awards. We appreciate all of you. Science has been especially important this year. From finding a vaccine to landing a rover on Mars, the ability to persevere is what allows us to meet our goals. You all did that this year. I am happy to announce that each of you will be awarded a unique Science and Engineering Fair medal that we've named the Perseverance Award. You will receive this medal, a certificate, a project review form, and a small token of appreciation thanks to our sponsors. These things will be mailed home to you next week. It's now time to recognize you and the work you have accomplished. Please know that while a few of your project slides will be featured during the ceremony, a link to the entire projects will be provided at the end. Join me in recognizing the 2021 Science and Engineer Fair awardees by divisions. Reagan Hamblin from Roosevelt Elementary School is a first grader who shows much promise in the area of science. Recently, she became curious about the germs in her house, which led to an investigation with a surprise conclusion. Congratulations, Reagan. You are receiving the Rising Star Award. We look forward to seeing you at the science fair for years to come. But for now, let's take a look at this young scientist and her Jeremy House project. First, we got all our materials. I put my gloves on and then we um, um, rubbed them on stuff. And then we put them in the cabinet for one week. So that was the first we rubbed them and stuff, and then the middle, which is we put them in there. And then the last um, one week later, we checked on them and stuff, and we saw. Greetings, Central Community. My name is Anthony Tosto, District Science Fair Coordinator and longtime science educator. 
Please join us today in honoring our young scientists and their accomplishments. With the goal of helping others, these fourth through sixth grade students turn ordinary household items into instruments of discovery. Let's take a look at the intermediate division and see just what they've learned about the world around them. I was definitely surprised that bleach didn't do much because it has like the most chemicals in it. So I thought that would at least like put it down a lot more than it did. So even if like a type of liquid has the most chemicals, it doesn't mean it's, it's going to be the conclusion or the results of the project. Why would it, the tap water freeze? Hmm. And like maybe because it's not mineralized. I had to ask myself that, like, why wouldn't the sparkling water freeze? Maybe it's because of the bubbles. But also sometimes when you shake up water, it has bubbles. So why would that be possible? So the more questions I asked myself, the closer I got, and like it became easier and more understanding. For my project, I asked questions like, um, why are certain things added to marshmallows and how are they used and how are they used? And the more I got information, the more I knew like how they were used, why they were used and who they were used by. And that really helped me understand like why to, why people made them and then like how to make them. So it made the project a lot easier. The thing that surprised me the most was that um, if you guys looked over my project, um, I said that I think grapefruit would go, would be the highest, but it was lemon. And I realized that the sourness might have something to do with how high the juice went. I realized that when I was doing my testing, lemon always went the highest. And that that would help me by helping me determine which juice had the highest reaction. I was playing a video game with my friend and we just got kicked, or I just got kicked out. And I figured out that there was just a bunch of stuff blocking my Wi-Fi. So I wanted to figure out like which things can do it uh, the most, which couldn't. So now I made sure my family keeps the like Wi-Fi rather clean too. Every two days, I watered each of them with their individual liquids. Like, for example, I had Gatorade, sugar water, and regular water. At the beginning, I did try to use orange juice and milk, but it failed. For some reason, they started getting moldy and never grew. Then I was kind of iffy about, well, is it Gatorade and sugar water gonna work now? But I was like, I might as well just keep going and keep trying. And so I did and it worked. Well, what I did in the project was I took a spaghetti beam and I measured it, I put it on two boxes and I hung a cup from it and I kept adding pennies to see how much weight it would be. I calculated, calculated the weight after and saw how much it held and compared it while changing the number of spaghetti stems from 15 to 10 to 5 to 1. And what was really interesting was that the one-stranded beam had a higher strength to weight ratio than a 15 spaghetti beam, even though it held more pennies. 
the red candle burn faster because the red bar is pretty much all the time is lower than the white bar. And then that, it got me wondering, like, I wonder if the, if a candle that was darker would like burn faster than the, just a white colored candle. So then I decided that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to try three different uh, weight amounts. Uh, so we added three weight amounts, amounts but um, before we did all those weight amounts, we tested the robot by itself to see how fast it would go to measure um, that amount of time. So as you can see, everybody scored higher when taking the quiz, talking on the cell phone while holding it. And I thought that that the results were gonna be the lowest because their their hands are distracted and they're also distracted talking to my assistant while while completing the test, which is something you have to focus on. But we measured out the, the plastic cups. Um, they were put, they all were 12 ounces. Then we checked um, on the boiling eggs to see if they were done. And then we um, put them in the- um, Use a stopwatch to track our 48 hours and- In 24 hours. On the first few days, they all looked really normal, and I th- and I was kind of surprised because I thought they would like die faster. But they um, stayed pretty healthy for the first week, but so it got a little drippier. When I was doing this project, uh, I was just um, looking at how fast my carousel was going with the heat of the fire on the candles. When I let each one of them i was making sure to count each spin when um it was going faster My grandparents and lots of my family members said that they couldn't breathe with the mask. And I wanted to do a project about this just to inform them that um, masks, do, masks do not change your oxygen. But I started checking my family's oxygen and um, I saw that the oxygen didn't change. It either stayed the same or went up, even with um, gender, age, poor, yeah. poor health condition. So none of that changed their oxygen. What surprised me the most was, was with my grandma, with lots of poor health conditions, hers went up each time. Necessity inspires invention. In the spirit of innovation, the students of the intermediate design and engineering category saw an opportunity to change the world around them by transforming their home spaces and garages into laboratories and research facilities. Let's take a look. So my um, extra desk is I built my own desk with a bunch of extra features to help um, organize and give me more space. So I added all these extra features like cup holders and um, pencil holders and glasses holders. And then I added a big book stand to keep your books up and open because that's one problem that I had um, is I had books all over and I didn't have enough space. 
And so the traditional desk is definitely smaller than mine. And just looking at the data collection, I think you could see that um, there's a lot of extra space and it could help you a lot. We found out that we had to drop the marble not the whole time, but sometimes we had to drop it on certain angles. The problem I had with the school desk is that um, I couldn't store a lot of things because our textbooks are really big and it can't always fit everything in there at once, especially on the top of the desk. There's a space on the top of the desk, but you can't put everything there because there's not a lot of storage. So I wanted it to make that small enough so it can fit on the desk. It's not super big and you won't be able to see anything about it. Um, so I made it small enough and thin enough where it doesn't like make the thickness and longness of the actual desk and it's a bit smaller than that. I picked this project because I am very interested in being hands-on and uh, like learning about physics is pretty cool. So Marble Roller Coaster was a perfect project for me and I kind of like to challenge myself. So this was a hard project and I liked it a lot. So, and my process was basically to record notes and do some background research and learn about physics. From psychology to physics, middle school division scientists ask questions and solve problems about the world that they live in. Let's take a look and see what they've learned. I tested red, the color red, blue, green, and white on, that was the background color, and then I put black images, I put nine black images on the background, on the color background. They're all the same images, and they're all the same size. And so I tested, I got participants, and they each have a minute to memorize the slide, and then they take a survey for me, and then they put in detail what they remember on the slides. Again, we are so proud of each of you and hope to see you next year at the 39th Annual Central Unified Science and Engineering Fair. In the meantime, keep being curious about the world around you, ask questions, and use the scientific design and engineering process to help you answer those questions. Thank you parents, coaches, teachers, and members of the community, sponsors for your ongoing support. We give special thanks to Mrs. Marsha Gober, Administrative Assistant in Central Unified's Educational Services Department. Ms. Gober spends countless hours organizing science fair and helping behind the scenes with registration and awards. She serves on the board of Central Foundation and is a champion for Central Unified. Happy retirement, Marsha, and we thank you for lo your long-standing dedication to Science Fair. Thank you, everyone, and again, congratulations. See you next year.